Hey guys, what's going on? Blaine back for another Netflix review, and today I'm going to be talking about The Beautiful Game. The Beautiful Game is a British sports drama that tells the story of Vinny, a homeless man and former pro football player who tries his best to make ends meet for his daughter, but has a hard time in doing so. His expertise at playing football catches the eye of a team coach named Mal, who recruits him. However, the team isn't just any average football team. Vinny has joined a group of fellow Brits who will compete at the upcoming Homeless World Cup in Rome, designed to advocate change for and recognition of those struggling with homelessness. Throughout the tournament, Vinny must learn to put aside his pride and play not to benefit himself, but for the team and others like him. It's similar to other feel-good sports dramas, even reminding me of another Homeless World Cup movie called Dream, but this one is still just as enjoyable. The depth and chemistry of the characters and the positive tone make it a lot of fun to watch, even if the overall story is a tad bit familiar at times. I appreciated the depth Michael Ward added to his portrayal of Vinny. Even though his character is quite abrasive toward others, he never comes off as being that way just for the sake of it. Beneath his rough exterior is a vulnerable man who gradually becomes revealed over the course of the story, and I like the way his layers unfolded. He's a family man who tries to save face and maintain his image at all times, but struggles to reconcile with the bad hand he was dealt with in his life. There's a certain relatability his character has that makes it easier to stay invested in him, and to see how he'll work his way towards swallowing his pride and return in top form. I also like seeing Bill Nye's performance as the coach Mal. It was funny to see how he flip-flopped between being the calm and collected coach wrangling all the eccentric teammates, only for him to lose his cool during games and getting dealt red cards by referees. I never knew what to expect from him, which made him an entertaining character. Unfortunately, there isn't much more depth to him beyond this. The movie does try to portray the bond he has or had, I guess, with his deceased wife, but it's only shown in a few scenes, so it's not enough to really impact the movie as a whole. Thankfully, his interactions with Vinny make up for this, as the two share a lot of great scenes together where the two come to understand and build each other up. This goes for the rest of the team as well, which ended up being the heart and soul behind this movie and much of what makes the story so good. Not only do all the cast members have fantastic chemistry with each other, but they all have their own unique personalities and backgrounds between each other. Nathan, Kevin, Alder, Cal, and Jason all surprised me with how fleshed out they were as characters. Whether the movie focused on Nathan's struggles to recover from drug addiction or Alder staying optimistic in spite of fleeing his war-torn home country, they all have a reason to be on the team, and not just because they're all homeless. This is what I love about this movie. It doesn't treat its characters like stereotypical homeless people who are typically unclean, unkempt, and unhinged. They are all ordinary people who had, and still have, hopes and dreams, and seeing them lift each other up, even when Vinny tends to throw them off a bit, was a joy to behold. Even more impressive is how the movie extends this to other characters outside of the English team. Team members from the American team, Japanese team, and South African team are explored as well. Not quite as much as the English team, of course, but it's still appreciated with how much thought the movie put into all of its characters. Some of them even have individual subplots between the English team members too. This adds even more variety to the story than there already was, as well as emphasizing the sense of togetherness and empowerment that the Homeless World Cup fosters and is all about. And with this in mind, the movie the movie also points out the diversity of struggles that homeless people endure and the importance of finding a sense of belonging. While it mainly centers on Vinny and him overcoming his sense of independence, which is good by itself, it's even better with how the movie is able to layer so many other characters on top of him, who in the end all have the same needs. The movie has an uplifting tone throughout its story that made me feel all warm and fuzzy inside when watching. There are times when the movie reigns things in a bit and allows drama to foster where it's necessary, but for the most part it's a classic feel-good kind of story that feels appropriate with regards to what it's saying. Now that being said, there are times when the movie can be overly sweet and saccharine. Sometimes it's the music trying too hard to be whimsical, while other times it's moments between the characters being a little too sappy. But considering the type of movie that it is, and the fact it doesn't go overboard too too often, this is easily forgiven. What I do have more of an issue with is how easily things come for Vinny. Within the first 10 minutes, pretty much everything is set up for him without a lot in terms of development. It just feels rushed with how he's railroaded into his team without any kind of valid reason, apart from his obvious skills in football. And this kind of feels at odds with one of the messages of the Homeless World Cup, that message being that it doesn't matter if you're good at the sport or not. Even the character Cal takes issue with Vinny's sudden insertion into the team, but it's never properly addressed. I don't know what it is, but story-wise, things just seem to come really easily for Vinny and could have used more context. Pacing issues aside, things improve when it's squarely focused on the outcome of the tournament. It has its fair share of ups and downs that put the audience on a roller coaster of emotions the same way any intense sports game would, which makes the story more engaging. 
Even though most of the teams aren't supposed to be pros, it's cool how the movie manages to make the game stay intense regardless. Lots of good techniques are on display here, both with the players and the cinematography of the angles pulled off during the games. I'm not even a fan of football myself, or soccer as we call it here in Canada, and I still found myself immersed in the action. The games aren't there just for the spectacle either, as a lot of genuinely heartwarming character moments take place during them. One of my favorite moments is when the Japanese team plays just for the sake of creating a happy memory by scoring one goal throughout the whole tournament, and this motivates them to give their all against the British team in what is one of the most inspiring scenes in the entire movie. A lot of these moments happen outside of the games as well, and this is where the movie makes great use of its Roman setting. While it's not the core focus of the movie, it's still a blast to see the characters relax and take in the scenery when they can, and they strike a good balance between lighthearted humor and character development in the right moments. Again, it reminds me a lot of the Korean movie Dream, with how a ragtag group of individuals come together to empower themselves and inspire goodwill on behalf of their home country. The story structure of this movie is very similar to that movie, so it is predictable in that sense, but it's still executed well, and its themes on fostering teamwork and togetherness through sport remain consistently strong. Overall, The Beautiful Game is a beautiful movie that isn't exactly original, but that doesn't stop it from being an inspirational good time. If you like feel-good sports movies with a lot of emphasis placed on characters, you'd enjoy checking this out. Though this movie's story can be occasionally ham-fisted and have issues with pacing, the character moments and uplifting presentation make up for it. It's always great to see movies that promote social messages that are relevant today, and of all the goals this movie scores, this is the best one yet. What did you think about this movie? Did you enjoy its cheerful presentation and characters, or did you find them tacky instead? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways guys, that's going to wrap up my review of The Beautiful Game. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always stay tuned for the next part, where next time I review the British biographical drama, Scoop. Bye bye!